Good morning, everybody. It's your boy once again, Brooklyn McLean, and welcome to quote number four of the video tutorial from my book of favorite quotes, 30 Day Transformation to Becoming a Better You. Okay, quote number four, we're moving on. Um, if you're just now tuning in or catching up, uh, I've already, we've already done number one, number two, number three. You can find the links in the uh, description and Catch up, baby. Time waits for no one. So y'all can see I'm checking my frame. I was feeling a little intellectual. A little intellectual this morning. Got my self-love t-shirt on because I want to keep reminding myself that I need to love on myself. Okay? Number four. By one of my favorite people is Will Smith. <clears throat> and number four is... Quote number four, no matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you are not skilled, if you don't study, if you don't dedicate yourself to being a better person every single day. Okay? No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you are not skilled, if you don't study, if you don't dedicate yourself to being better every single day. That's Bob Will Smith. Okay? This one is great for anyone wanting to excel at something. For those of us whom things come easy or naturally to, it can be tough to embrace because you are able to do it at a certain level without much effort. We have all seen the naturally gifted athlete who swims or runs fast or jumps high. And in contrast, we have seen less naturally gifted people excel because they have practiced, rehearsed, or repeated something over and over again. Typically, the naturally gifted person is called a talent or talented. The less gifted one is usually called skilled. Both have value in trying to accomplish something as in a feat. But when you want to excel or be great at something, the individual that can marry talent with skill stands to be exceptionally more accomplished than one or the other. The skilled person will go further than a talented person because the skilled person has processes and tools to handle situations when they become stressful. Talent can take you places your character can't keep you. But skill helps to develop character. They say it takes 10,000 hours of practice to reach match mastery, which usually takes 10 years. Obviously, it can be cut shorter with more dedication to a particular act. We have seen it time and time again. Think about Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Wayne Gretzky, Mozart, Steve Jobs, and Bill Gates. All of these individuals were talented people who with time, repetition, and training became masters of their craft and because of it, excelled beyond normal constraints. I had an opportunity to work with Wayne Gretzky on a Tylenol commercial. I asked how he became so great at hockey. He told me that when he was a kid, where he lived, the lake would freeze over for months at a time. He would literally skate up to eight hours a day for days on end, honing his craft. When you consider the time spent, it is no wonder how, along with his talent, he became the great one. Bill Gates has spoken often of the hours upon hours he spent coding in his garage. Same as Mark Zuckerberg. There's a reason people excel beyond most, and it is because of the training and dedication they pour into their art or business. What is it that you have a desire to do? Your talent may be limited due to physical restrictions, but your ability to be skilled is limitless. Develop the attitude of maximum capacity meaning I am going to develop myself fully in order to bear the maximum amount of fruit I can squeeze out of my talent. It is determined only by how much time you are willing to spend beating on your craft, whatever it may be. Human beings are the only species that doesn't seek to maximize its potential. We are unlimited in the amount of information we can take in. We should use fruit trees as an example. A fruit tree bears all of the fruit it possibly can every season. We should do the same. Get to work and enjoy the process of becoming great. All right. So we're just going to go back through it and break some of these components down. So once again, the fourth quote is by Will Smith. No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you are not skilled, if you don't study, if you don't dedicate yourself to being better every single day. Okay, let's think about that. 
Um, I come from basketball. So anybody who's played a sport at any particular time in your life, you know, you, you've come across kids that were naturally gifted. You know, for whatever reason, a particular kid could just run fast or jump high. It was quick. You know, it was a little more, you know, physically developed than other kids. And I wasn't one of those kids. You know what I mean? I was, I was a late bloomer physically. Excuse me. Um, so in order for me to compete, I needed to be really good at something. So I had to work extra hard at finding a lane for myself to fit in and when it came to basketball you know I was a little guy so dribbling and driving inside you know the paint area you know with the trees down there I'm getting my shot blocked so I had to learn to develop an outside shot to still have some effectiveness on the basketball court where those other kids who were naturally gifted didn't necessarily do that okay so I would go by myself, you know, my brothers were older, I would walk to the to the, the local elementary in Inglewood, and I would just shoot by myself. I would watch, you know, we didn't have the, you know, dating myself, but we didn't have, you know, internet and, you know, be able to pull stuff up on your phone and tutorials. We, I would watch a basketball game and then remember what I saw, take it down to the park and practice it. So I would just shoot, get my own rebound, shoot, or find a friend that could rebound for me, and we would, you know, shoot with each other and rebound for each other. Um, so in that sense, when looking back, and I came across that idea of 10,000 hours to achieve mastery from a book uh, called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. So that's a great book if you want to pick something else up. O-U-T-L-I-E-R-S, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Okay, 10,000 hours of repetition to achieve mastery. So when I look back and when I got gained confidence in what I was doing, I was like, wow, like, I see how I put in at least 10,000 hours. If not, I'm sure more at this point, but 10,000 hours, that's why I was so good at what I was doing. As an actor, you know, 10,000 hours of class, of, you know, auditions, I mean, you know, piling in everything all in together. Um, there was a casting director um, from Days of Our Lives. Her first name is Marnie. I don't want to butcher her last name, but I did a workshop that she conducted, and she asked the class, she goes, "For how many in here is acting your career, right? So everybody raised their hand. She goes, Follow me on this. Let's do an equation. She goes, your typical full-time job is 40 hours a week. Right? Would you agree? Let's, you know, everybody raise their hand. She goes, how many hours a week are you putting into your career as an actor? Right? So everybody kind of got quiet, started looking, at, looking around, you know, trying to do the math in their head. She goes, how many in here take an acting class? Right? So pretty much everybody raised their hand. So your typical acting class is three hours a week. She goes, I'm going to let you count everything that you believe that you do for your career. So if you go to the gym, how many people in here go to the gym? She goes, all right, I'll give you two hours, five days a week. So that's another 10 plus the class is three. That's 13 hours. How many of you um, are auditioning? three, four times a week, you know, less hands went up, you know, fortunately at that, at, you know, my hand could still go up, um, you know, your preparation, you might study, you know, let's say two hours, three hours on an audition, and you audition three times a week, so that's another nine hours, you know, that's 22 hours, she goes, how many people are taking an improv class, right? I think maybe my hand and somebody else's hand went up. So that for me, that was, you know, three hours, 25 hours. Then she goes, what about a co-reading class? Right? At that time, I was taking a co-reading class. So that's another three hours. So that was 28 hours. Um, she goes, 
even if you're getting together, reading scripts out loud with your friends, he's like, I will let you add whatever time, it, you know, into your equation. Personally, at that time, I was at, because I was teaching acting class at that time too, so, you know, that was another three hours a week that I could add in there. So I was in, in the 30s. So most people could barely add up 15 hours that they were dedicating to their career, right? So 15 hours, that's part-time. So people were, actors were putting part-time work into their full-time career and was wondering why they weren't getting the results that they thought they should get, right? And you might ask, what does this example have to do with anything? It's like, yeah, a lot of actors are talented, right? You have an ability to memorize some lines or, you know, you can play the waitress and come up and ask somebody, you know, can I take your order? Like, right? Anybody can do that. Um, but when we're comparing ourselves, which is shouldn't be doing, but if you're <laughs> comparing yourselves to a Denzel or a Will or a Meryl Streep or Al, like Al Pacino, it's like, they're dedicating so much more time to their craft, right? That's why, you know, you're trying to get to those 10,000 hours. You're trying to achieve mastery. So if you have a level of mastery, it doesn't matter how many people are vying for a job. You're going to stand out because you've put in more work, right? And I'm not talking about reality shows or you know, the, the, you know, the crumbs at the bottom of the barrel. I'm talking about those people that excel above and beyond. So when I looked at myself and was wondering, you know, why, how come I'm not where I'm supposed to be? Or where I think I'm supposed to be? When in actuality, I am exactly where I'm supposed to be based on the work that I put in. If I want to see some different results, I got to put in some more work. Right? Input equals output. So talent, skill. Talent is only going to take you so far, right? Because, and it, and it was it was proven to me. I'll share another example. When I first started in this business of acting, um, I would say maybe after about three or four years, I finally started kind of breaking through on some, some bigger opportunities. And I remember the first time that I went to network to test for a TV show, okay? And at that point, I, would cons I had never taken an acting class. I was just talented. I was a natural. That's what every casting director would say about me. You're a natural. Right? And I was like, yeah, I'm a natural. <laughs> and I thought at the time that being in school or acting class was for people who couldn't get a job. I'm working. Right? So I'm ego, boastful, like just, you know, you couldn't tell me nothing. Right? So I audition, get the call back. Go to producers, right? They're going to test me. It's my first time. I was like, what's the test? It's like, oh, you know, a screen test. We're going to match you up, chemistry, to make sure, you know, everything is cool. And, and during this process, I had, quote, unquote, beat out people that I grew up watching on TV, right? I'm talented. So I get to the screen test. The girl who's playing my, my girlfriend, we're there, right? It was cool, like, you know, it was, I, it was enough to get me by, right? They're like, okay, we still like you. We're going to uh, take you in front of the network, okay? So I'm telling my friends who have been in the business for a while, like, well, man, what's the network? Okay, this is what's going to happen. You know, you're going to have all these suits in there. Everybody's going to be dressed in black. And, you know, you're going to, this is like the final, the final showdown. It'll be you and some other people. You're going to sign a, a contract to say how much money you're going to make. Like, everything is going to be worked out. So when they make their decision, boom, you're going. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready for this, right? So I get up in there. I see a couple of other people that I grew up watching. I was like, okay, but I'm like, come on, man. This is, this is competition. This is game time. Like, keep doing what you've been doing. And... One of the producers came up to me and tried to give me a note, right? At the time, I didn't even know what a note was. I'm just a natural. <laughs> I 
And he saw that I was getting a little confused, like, huh? And he's like, don't worry about it, just keep doing what you've been doing. So I was like, yeah, all right, cool, man. let me stay focused. So I get my contract, I sign my contract, I was going to make, it was a six episode guarantee, I was going to make $25,000 a week. It's $150,000 guarantee. I'd never made that much money in my life, right? So I'm already like, oh, my bills are paid, right? But there's now there's increased pressure because there's real money on the line. So not only are the people that I'm going to compete against, there's money on the line. The producer's trying to give me, trying to give me a note and like all the suits, like everything, the pressure is starting to build, right? So I go in the room, I see everybody and I was like, oh, shit. Okay, keep doing what you've been doing. You've, you've gotten this far. They put a mic on me, right, with a cord hanging from it and a little pack. And there was no mics in the audition. So now I'm like, well, how am I going to move around with the mic? And then there's a camera in the corner. And I'm like, there was no cameras in the audition. Like, now I got to try to find the camera and the light and the girl. And I'm right. So all of this stuff started to add pressure to the situation. Right. So now I wasn't able to just be talented. Right. It would behoove me to have been skilled and learn all of those different aspects of acting that I would have got in class. <laughs> but I was too cool for school. So lo and behold, the audition didn't go very well. Right. I came out and I was like, wow, I just blew it in that opportunity, right? And I didn't understand how important studying was, dedicating myself every single day to being better. I thought talent was enough to get me to the top. Talent is a piece of it. But in retrospect, I'd rather be skilled than talented, right? I'd rather not know something about nothing and then have somebody teach me the proper way of doing it then kind of be good at it and then, you know, patting myself on the back. Now, if you can be talented and skilled or you can have a talent and you're hungry to be skilled at with your talent. Now, like we talked about, you're, you know, Michael Jordan or, you know, LeBron James or a Will Smith or, you know, a Meryl Streep or, you know, a lot of the Robert De Niro, like a lot of these people that have a natural certain quality about them, but they... They study, man. Like Denzel studies to this day. You know, I, I heard a story where um, when he was doing Fences on Broadway, before the rehearsal even started, he had hired, you know, a, a young guy that I, he's familiar with and just ran his lines for two, three hours a day before the rehearsal. So when he got to rehearsal, he wasn't worried about his lines. Now he can, he can sit in the, the environment of his character and, and really find those, those, really, those nuances that would, would bring his characters to life. Will Smith, he doing character biographies, right? If he's going to be a doctor, he's going to a hospital to actually learn how to perform and you, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're doing so much more than the average person. And then the average person wonders, well, how come it's not happening for me? Or they look at the, those people like, I could never be like them. And I'm going, nah, that's so far from the truth because I used to think that. Once I realized the kind of effort and work that I needed to have, the kind of dedication and determination I needed to have, now, right, I, I felt a leap. I felt a leap up from what I was doing. And, and to have more, I got to keep improving myself. Right. Be grateful for right where I am. Be appreciative for right where I am. And then have a desire to keep expanding, to keep growing. OK, so I don't want to get I don't want this video to go on too long, but I'm just going to quote number four. No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you are not skilled, if you don't study, if you don't dedicate yourself to being better every single day. So as a mentor, it's something that I try to communicate to kids like every day, 
every day. Think about all the things that you are really good at. You probably do it every day. Right? I'm really good at breathing because I do it every day. I can walk like a master because I do it every day. Right? Self-development. I'm self-help personal development. It's something that I look at every single day. Because I was like, I don't want to just have a knack for it. I want it to benefit me and I want it to, to benefit you. So I got to learn how to teach it. So that means I need to dedicate myself to being better every single day. Keep reading. Keep writing. Keep growing. Keep experiencing. Keep traveling. Keep meeting new people. Keep having new experiences. So I can keep growing and then I can keep sharing information with you. Right? This book is just the tip of the iceberg. This is my first attempt at writing something. And I'm, I'm proud of what I was able to do, but it's like it's just the beginning. As I keep growing, as I keep evolving, the next time I write, it's going to be better than this one. Or the next time I do anything, it will be better than the previous attempt. If you continue to study and dedicate yourself to being better every single day. Okay? And then we also talked about in there how... Your talent can take you places your character can't keep you. Think about that. Your talent can take you places your character can't keep you. I just gave you an example. My talent took me to the network to test for the show. My character couldn't handle it because I wasn't skilled. I buckled under the pressure. It was too much pressure for that person that I was. I needed to become somebody else who could handle that situation. And it's nothing to beat yourself up or myself up about. When you know better, you can do better. I didn't know any better. And I'm sure people were trying to tell me, hey, man, take a class. But, I, you know, man, I know what I'm doing, right? Until it was proven to me that I didn't know what I was doing. Or I knew what I was doing up until a point. And it's okay. All right. You know what? My bad. <laughs> I'm going to get in that class. I'm going to start studying. I'm going to start dedicating myself to be better every single day. Now, the last point that we're going to talk about um, is how humans are the only species that doesn't maximize its potential. Right? I got that from Jim Rohn, great speaker, great intellectual mind. He talks about how the only thing that we physically, or the only thing that we maximize to our fullest potential is our physical. Right, because we don't have any decision making over that. You can't decide not to grow as tall as you can grow. Right? My skin color, you know, my eye color, like those are all hardwired into our DNA. But when it comes to our brains and our ability to take in information and grow and learn and educate ourselves, there's no limit. There's no limit to what you can do. But humans, we don't do it because we have free will. We have choice. And most of us choose to be average, right? But a tree, a tree bears all the fruit it can bear every single year. It doesn't hold back. It doesn't give you half, right? The, 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 the weather or the, or the rain that comes, it, that, it, that's, it gives you whatever it has. Animals give us everything they have. Every species gives us everything that they have. Flowers. A rose doesn't partially bloom. Like it gives you everything it has and then it recycles. And that's what we should be doing. We should be giving it everything that we have. Dedicating ourselves every single day to be better. Until our time is up. And then let's go off wherever we go and let's recycle and come back as something else or whatever, whatever other dimension that we can ascend to. But we have to stop being okay with being average. And that's what the society does to us. It makes it okay to be average. And then we celebrate those who aren't average and then we feel like we can never be like them. Or accomplish, not necessarily be like them, but, be, you know, we can't accomplish. When everybody has that capacity and that ability. Okay, so let's stop being average. Let's start having an attitude of being unstoppable, an attitude of maximizing our ability, maximizing our capacity, 
right? Because this is an unlimited universe. We can do whatever we want. We see creations all around us from people who believe beyond what was in front of them. Okay? One last time, because this is so important. This is so important. And I'm stepping off my soapbox. <laughs> Number four by Will Smith. No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you are not skilled. If you don't study, if you don't dedicate yourself to being better every single day. Use it or lose it. It's a muscle. Right? Most of us go to the gym. No matter how many times you go to the gym and whatever kind of shape that you're in, if you stop going to the gym, your body's going to revert back to something else. Right? This is not rocket science. Life is so much easier than we've been led to believe. Dedicate yourself. Okay? I'm with you. I'll support you. Okay? As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, whatever. Let's 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 dialogue. Okay, I'm Brooklyn McGlynn. Reading from my book of favorite quotes: "30 Day Transformation to Becoming a Better You." If you don't have your copy, you can go to Amazon.com or you can go to LifeStrategyMeetup.com. Right, get you it's ten bucks, eleven bucks, ten ninety nine, I think, and ten percent of proceeds go to buying toiletries and socks for the homeless. Same as these self love T shirts. They're 20 bucks and donating 10%, you know, to, to helping people out. Okay? We're here together. Let's keep growing. Let's keep building. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody has a great week. And, uh, man, let's keep rising, baby. Peace.